All right, so um, this is Usability Primer in 10 minutes flat. My name's Steve Berry. I'm the uh, principal at Thought Merchants. Uh, I'm a user experience, user interface, and design consultant. Um, I specialize in working with startups and emerging companies uh, here in New York and previously in Philadelphia. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, you might recognize me as the designer of last year's t-shirt. <laughs> and if you turned it upside down, it kind of looked like a gentleman's sausage. So I apologize. It was totally inadvertent. The things you get, you get rec recognized for. <laughs> <laughs> so back to the topic. So we're going to talk about usability. And um, I'm going to talk about usability for web apps and, and uh, web experiences. And there's pretty much a, a fidelity chart. There's low fidelity and high fidelity. And the acronym, acronym to categorize these things I like to uh, use is FOOP. Uh, and that means <laughs> <laughs> functional, usable, emotional, and persuasive. So functional is something that really Rails comes out of the box with. When you put it on Bootstrap, you have a functional web experience. The next one over is usable, and that's when you optimize for particular tasks. Emotional is, is like um, Foursquare. When you check in, you have that experience. You get rewarded for, hey, oh, look, I got this badge. And you, you have that emotional attachment with the application. Then there's persuasive. And I think everyone tries to aspire to have these persuasive uh, web experiences that change behavior and modify behavior. But I don't think we're quite there yet. So in usability, there's, I kind of break this down into two different topics. There's testing, where you have uh, a user. You sit them down next to a computer. You record them. You ask them questions. You see if they, if they accomplish them or not. But the one I'm going to focus on today is heuristics. And heuristics are experience-based techniques uh, for problem solving. And the example I like to give is if you walk to work every day and all of a sudden a bum shows up at the corner and harasses you every day, uh, you're not going to like that. So you're going to say, OK, I'm going to go around and take the long way to work. That's a heuristic. I keep getting harassed. I'm going to avoid that. And so these are things, uh, what I'm going to show here, that web professionals have been sort of building, you know, building this Bible of information um, that, hey, these patterns work. And the first one and most important one is, is F patterns. And this is how to lay out a web application or a web form in the most effective way. So how to. It's really simple. And this is like, as a designer, telling you guys as developers, if you line things up on the left and make it go straight down, that goes a long way. Create, and that's creating the clear left-hand scan line. Now, there's some technical terms in here, but I'll try to like, break it down and make it something pretty simple. Put important words first. If there's a the or two in the first, in the first uh, part of the sentence, no, 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 no. Action words first. And use a grid. Uh, if you're sort of arbitrarily aligning things up or like, Mm, is this like five pixels or eight pixels or nine pixels? No, no, no. You should have, OK, we have a grid. It's 20 pixels. This is either 20 pixels or 40 pixels. Make it a multiple of that. So why? Increased scannability. Users can then look for the thing they're looking for. And the technical term is that is ambient findability. You put things on a page, and you're making essentially patterns that people can detect and then find the information they're looking for. It's called known item searching. Don't really need to know that. but. Decrease eye fixations. This is something for like a marketing website that doesn't really matter. But for if you're creating an administration application or something that someone uses 8 to 10 hours a day, uh, decreasing eye fixations where you know, their eyes look all, all day is, makes a huge difference. And when you get good at it, you can sort of control where people look. So let's get a real world example. This is a simple sign up form. You've probably seen a million like it. There's a logo, a title, and some web stuff here. So what I'm going to do is you know, this is lined up optimized using the F pattern. You can almost see them here, right? But if I'm going to look, so this is like sort of a pseudo tracking um, a user's gaze. Like I'm looking at the logo, I kind of shoot across, right? Then I'm looking down at the next item, sign up, cool. And now I'm going to look here, down, here, down, and here, right? And I almost get this, this little bit of F that shows up. And that means you've created a successful layout, right? <laughs> I know F means bad, but that means good in this case. <laughs> this is another example. This is a customer.io new interface. Um, we have a, a page title. We have a regional navigation. There's a collapsed global navigation here. But again, you can almost see that there's this top little F guy. And then the content for the page here, you'll see there's a title. Go across as a button, left-hand scan line. Boop, right down here, another title, more information. And so these are kind of things you can look for day to day. Boom, boom. Another big topic is labeling. And uh, labeling is essentially a fancy word. This is what information architects are calling like the content of links, right? So home, tour, security monitor, plans and pricing, get started, free 14 days. Those are labels. 
The one I hate the most is read more. I have no idea what more is. Without context, I have no idea what I'm clicking on. And my expectations, I, it could, I don't know what more is. So if, if anybody ever says, like, ah, just throw read more on there, that's a smell, all right? Like, you can find uh, a better label for that. Here's some great ones. Square does a great job. Get free card reader, right? Action word first. Free card reader. I know what a card reader is. If I click on that, I'm sure as shit getting a free card reader. <laughs> <laughs> Again, build your list. I click on this, I'm going to be building a list. View full-size screenshot, I'm probably going to see a full-size screenshot, right? Yes. That's awesome. So the rule of thumb here is action words to the left. Put them to the left. English language loves subject, verb, object, but people don't read online. Kill the subject. It's implied. Verb, object, go. If you're interested in this, there's a great resource. Yahoo has done something right. They made this awesome book, and they have an awesome web uh, resource. So styleguide.yahoo.com. It's unbelievable. Another one that's often overlooked is line length. I mean, this is like really simple. And there's really one answer. It's 12 to 17 words, and that ends up being 45 to 75 characters. That's per line. If you have more or less, there's problems. And it could fluctuate a little bit. If it's a mobile device that's really close to your face, it could be 12, it could be 10, right? If it's something where the, the screen's a little bit further away, a desktop experience, then it could be 17, 22 maybe, right? So these are guidelines. They're not like you know, set in stone rules. Uh, another one, and this is something you know, people always say is like, you know, when things are close together, you're normally related. Actually, there's a whole field of, uh, of research, and it's called proximity. Things that are close together, users will refer infer, pardon me, relationship. So here's an example of something that's not, doesn't have good proximity. We have Joe Tester and AIC Academic Inter Internship Council, Jonk University and Anna Tester. When these things are sort of just arbitrary aligned, you don't know what the relationships of these items are. Well, I'm moving together. I think Anna Tester belongs to Jonk University. It's kind of a ridiculous sort of sandbox here, but put it in an interface, and now it starts to make sense. Here we have um, interchanges, uh, index page for looking for their users that they have in the system, and you look, they're right here. And a tester belongs to this university, and if I shoot across to the right, it says great F patterns, I know that this information is related. Another one here. Here's a button, buy now, PayPal. If I click on buy now, I bet you I'm going to PayPal. <laughs> Proximity, right? And I'm setting expectations, and if it goes to PayPal, I'm meeting those expectations. That's making the user more comfortable. They're more likely to click and explore the rest of your website. Sort of just sort of drilling home the point. Uh, my favorite, and I think this is the easiest one to accomplish, here's the interface. I have a global navigation at the top, dashboard metrics docs. The easiest way to set expectations and then meet them is when I click on metrics, I go to that page, I have metrics and metrics. Yes, right? I clicked on that thing. I've been rewarded. It's literally that simple. I see you. <laughs> this all builds the consistency. The more consistent your web app is, the more comfortable your users are. It's like it's, it's a nice, friendly sofa, right? I get comfortable. I can click around. I'm not nervous about clicking. It's like when you see, um, like, your, you're like my mom, when I watch her, like, she's like, oh, I can't click on that. I don't know where it's going to go. Actually, that's part of the web experience's fault. They should feel comfortable in making that click decision. And the, user, and the more users explore, the more app there is to give, right? And a lot of times, the longer someone is on your application, the more value they derive, most of the time. But in the end, all the topics I'm talking about here, and this is just the beginning of you know, whole usability talk, they fit in this, the top part of this triangle. And as fancy as you want to make all these uh, heuristics and, and the flashy buttons and all that kind of stuff, content is still the foundation of your web experience. And please don't forget that. Content is king. If your content is crap, it doesn't matter what else you do. For further re reading, um, a couple things. Useit.com, it's fantastic. He has an uh, article that comes out once every two weeks, and it's very short. It's, easy, it's really easy to read. Rosenfeld Media, there's this thing. Uh, Luke W., he has a book called Web Forms. It's fantastic. It's really short. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>